Will you start? Yes, we are live. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, hello, everyone, to another uh, seminar um, computer architecture class. Uh, today, um, our first paper, we're going to have uh, Young Guns presenting for us uh, the Impica paper presented in ICCD 2016. Uh, Jan is a second year PhD, uh, not PhD, second year undergrad student in the computer science department. Uh, his interest uh, lies in alternatives architect alternative architectures, accelerators, and quantum computing. And he's going to give us an overview about this work that accelerates protein chasing using 3D stack proxy memory solutions. So thank you so much and enjoy. Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome to my presentation about accelerating pointer chasing in 3D stacked memory, the challenges, mechanisms, and evaluation. First to the summary, um, we'll talk a little bit about the problem pointer chasing, because it's a key bottleneck in the most modern important workloads. Then the goal of the paper is to accelerate pointer chasing in the main memory. The challenges we will face are a parallelization challenge of the accelerator and the address translation from virtual to physical addresses. Uh, the accelerator is called Impica in memory pointing, uh, pointer chasing accelerator, and it will solve those problems by decoupling um, the address generation from the memory accesses and by implementing a new smaller low cost page table. And then the key results are that there's a speed up from up to 90% and a energy reduction of up to 40%. So let's start with the introduction. Um, linked data structures are used everywhere in modern programs. Well, linked list, binary trees, you can find binary trees in databases, in file system, in 3D game um, engines where you have to partition the space and, and dynamic routing tables, but there are also other kinds of linked data structures like the hash table, which internally again uses linked lists if there's a collision in the in one bucket. Um, and then there are general graphs which depend heavily on um, pointer chasing, for example, um, garbage collection, and there are also data sets from various different fields that contain a lot of um, pointer chasing or a lot of graphs, for example, social media or data from social media. So linked data structures are used everywhere. As you probably all know, a linked list contain, uh, is built from different elements where each element contains the address to the next element. And this address is a virtual address. So every time we want to load the next element, we have to translate this virtual address to a physical address. So every time we load the next element. Um, and yeah, this is of course a problem because um, you have to do it uh, every time and it's quite an expensive operation as we will see later. So quite similar to this is the binary tree which has the same problems and additional, you have to decide at every node which pointer you want to chase next and which, um, so which node you want to load next. For example, here you have to decide whether A is bigger or smaller than H and based on that, take the left node and you have to do this decision at every node. So for every node, you have to do a small computation before, because, uh, before you can decide which Pointer is the next node. So now we'll look at the problems we'll face. Because in conventional system, if a CPU makes a general memory access, then it sends the virtual address to a um, translation unit, which translates the virtual to a physical address. Then this physical address gets sent to the caches. But if the caches hasn't stored them, then it goes to the main memory, which returns the data back to the CPU. This is of course very slow and uh, there's a huge performance bottleneck because if you have a linked list, you have to do this maybe several thousand times and you don't want to do every single step several thousand times here. So um, yeah, as we know, this is a performance bottleneck and 
Um, this is a graph of the execution time for um, some databases, the DBX1000 and another application memcached, which um, is also a database type application. As you can see, the pointer chasing is up to 20% or 10 to 20% in those applications, which is a quite large percentage. And also the LLC uh, last level cache misses are quite high from 30 to up to 40%. Um, so uh, um, last level cache miss cycle ratio. And we can see that those pointer chasing operations are such a huge bottleneck because um, they have to access the RAM quite frequently. So one possible solution that one might think is the prefetcher, but there are actually a few problems the prefetcher will not solve reliably or enough. For example, if you have non-data, um, non-space local data, and for example, a linked list that is inserted randomly or even all across the memory, then the prefetcher cannot really prefetch anything because they are pretty much random and without a huge performance overhead, the prefetcher couldn't prefetch anything reliably. The second bad thing is that, um, for example, binary trees have diverging paths. And every time you access a, a binary tree, you will, you will probably take a different path. So the accelerator can't determine based on the last address which address you will no load next. Additionally, the prefetcher still doesn't speed up the memory, uh, the the translation of the virtual to the physical address. And this process is quite expensive as we will see later. And the prefetcher will create an overhead on every misprediction. So we can't predict um, aggressively the next addresses because especially in modern hardware, the data movement is a huge bottleneck. So a prefetcher cannot solve the problem we are trying to solve. So let's come to the Impica and the overview and key ideas. So the conventional system is quite ineffective and has a huge performance bottleneck. -like. So in this paper, they put the Impica into main memory. And if you want to make a memory access or access to a linked data structure, then you can just say, for example, here, find the element A in this linked list. The Impica will now do all the computation and return the final element to the CPU. So that's, there's much smaller communication overhead. And because the Impica is in memory, it also has a faster access time. So now to the challenges. There are two key challenges. One is that we have to parallelize the Impica or the accelerator. And we'll see later exactly why and also the address translation from virtual to physical address. So we'll first focus on the parallelization of the accelerator. Um, if you have two memory accesses, one from the CTP and one from Epica, we can compare them. So the CPU has some computation, which is also the translation from virtual to physical um, address then a memory access, which is quite long in the case of the CPU, and again, a computation, which is equivalent to returning the result of the CPU. In Impica, it's basically the same, but with, uh, with a much shorter memory access. Um, as we can see, this would speed up the process, but now the problem is if we add multiple CPUs or get multiple requests from a CPU. In modern system, the DRAM can handle those accesses in parallel, and uh, but if the Impica wouldn't exploit the parallelism, then it would be much slower. Therefore, the Impica needs to exploit this parallelism in order to guarantee a speed up. So we could just parallelize it and then it would yield speed up. Now, the key idea to parallelize the accelerator is to decouple the address translation from the memory accesses. And we'll do uh, so. The memory access is one part and the computation, the translation, the other. So we can just add additional requests to here. And there's, of course, again, the speed up. So the computation parts get executed by the address engine and the memory access by the access engine. And so let's have a closer look at them. The key ideas 
to decouple the expensive address generation from the expensive memory accesses. It is quite similar to the DAE, the decoupled access execute architecture with a few differences. For example, the DAE exploits instruction level parallelism while the acceler oh, and um, the decoupling is compiler based while in the MPCA it exploits thread level parallelism and the decoupling happens in runtime because it's, it would be quite challenging to uh, decouple it at compile time if you have different CPU and potentially even different programs that run on the MPCA. So now the, now the internal communication of the address engine and the access engine happens, um, I guess, show now. Um, if the CPU sends a request to the MPCA, the address engine will catch the request and first calculate the address and translate it. And then afterwards sends this memory access to the access engine. Then the access engine will go to the main memory and get the data and returns it to the address engine. And if you have a linked list with thousands of elements, this cycle will continue thousands of times until the address engine finally knows this is the correct element and returns it to the CPU. Um, so let's now look at the address translation from the virtual to physical memory. Now here, the linked list again, as we know in every single step, you have to convert the virtual address to the physical address, which is quite expensive in the normal page table. Because here we see a conventional page table with, or a conventional translation unit with of five page tables. And you have to access them in serial and not in parallel because it's like a pointer chasing operation. And those page table walks are quite expensive and tend to have high latency because those page tables could potentially not be loaded into the cache and then have to make other memory requests. And so the solution that is proposed in the paper is to decouple the page table of Impica and the CPU. So the key ideas are that the accelerator will use a different page table, which is optimized uh, because the MPCA only um, operates on continuous regions in memory. It can make some optimizations, which will lead to a smaller region-based page table. So um, those continuous regions of address space are called MPCA regions. And um, yeah, the hierarchy in the end is much smaller because those MPCA regions aren't that big. Um, like in the CPU, so you need much less um, size, and therefore it results in a lower performance overhead. This is the translation unit of the Impica. Here on the left hand side, you can see the Impica regions, which would correspond to different data structures you want to store in the Impica uh, or in the accelerator. And those in Pika region first get processed, or if there's a memory request by the region table. So um, the program has to specify beforehand where exactly, for example, the binary tree lies in memory, tell this to the region table and it will arrange the rest. And then there are also two normal page tables in order to give a larger memory space to work with. So the in Pika's translation unit is much simpler than the one we've seen before with five or six um, page tables. So the um, advantage is that it will usually or maximally result in two misses and still has a quite huge range of memory, two terabytes, and normally your RAM isn't even that big. In the paper, they even explored a, a, a option to configure the size of the page tables so that they will fit better into the cache. So, because it's much easier to cache small page table than larger, and then you get less misses. And the good thing about this translation unit is that you can generalize it to, um, or use it in different accelerators, which work on, different, uh, on a continuous region in memory. Um, 
So let's come to the evaluation. <laughs> um, the system or the Impica was simulated with a full system simulator, CHAM5 with DRAM SIM2. And it has four out of order CPUs and a DRAM bandwidth of 12.8 gigabytes per second for the CPU and 51.2 gigabytes for the um, accelerator. And I assume these are reasonable numbers. Yeah. And the workloads are some linked data, uh, linked, uh, linked list hash tables binary, I think that contains uh, pointer chasing operations, but also real databases here, the DBX 1000 that we've already seen. So the results of the linked data structures are quite noticeable here. Um, it's compared to a baseline CPU with some extra memory because we don't want to observe the extra memory that is added in the Impica, just the advantages of the architecture of Impica. Um, in the case of the linked list, we see a 92% increase of speed up in the uh, with the hash tables, a 29% speed up and the binary 18%, which is quite large. Um, so the Impica results in a significant performance improvement in linked uh, link data structures. But also if you look at the databases, the real applications, we will see that the data throughput is still much higher here, around about 17%. Um, again, compared to the baseline CPU with your even one megabyte L2 cache. But also the data, the database latency will uh, decrease so around about 13% reduction of the latency. So in Pika results in, in the databases with a higher data throughput and uh, less latency in this real uh, application. Now let's come to the conclusion. So the problem was that pointer chasing is a key bottleneck for most important workloads. The goal was to accelerate those pointer chasing operations in memory. Uh, there were the challenges of parallelize the accelerator and the address translation. Impica solved those two problems by decoupling the address and ex, uh, the address engine and the access engine. And it also designed a new smaller uh, region-based page table. And the key results were up to 90% speed up and 40% energy reduction. Now to the strengths and weaknesses. First, the strengths. I think it's a really good strength that you can use the two, um, uh, on one hand, the parallelism challenge with the address and access engine for other accelerators too, and also the address translation if you have, or if you work on a contiguous region in memory. Um, and the results, of course, are very promising. If you have 90% speed up, you can definitely use it in especially pointer chasing heavy workloads. Now to the weaknesses. One weakness is that they've only simulated the Impica. Uh, if I know that the simulators get better and better every day, but I think it would still be nice to have a proof of concept built. Um, yeah, it would be much nicer. Um, and also there's no in-depth exploration of a workload which isn't pointer chasing heavy. Because it would be interesting to see the trade-off between training the caches and the TLB um, in comparison to just offload the workload to the Impica. Yeah. Now to the discussion. Do you have any questions already? Okay, then let's go to the first discussion question. What do you think what types of acceleration uh, accelerators could benefit from either the in-memory page table design with the Impica regions or the decoupling of the address engine and access engine? Do you have any idea or what could we build an accelerator that uses those concepts?
I have one idea. I had one idea myself, which would be a page table, maybe via a specialized in Pika because the page table performs pointer chasing uh, pointer chasing operations, which could be sped up with a um, accelerator because it's very memory intensive. And if we had a specialized version, it would maybe um, be beneficial, even though the pointer chasing um, operations are usually no longer than six chasings. Uh, you don't have to chase more. And maybe in, um, uh, even with a TLB, it would result in a huge speed up. Yeah. Um, do we have a mic? Uh, Ah, yeah. Thank you. Um, the second point where the uh, the deep talk coupling of address engine and access engine can maybe be used for up to, uh, for accelerators which handle memory which is uh, very close together, like for example array elements, and they could then translate one address. And then process a lot of memory since it, for example, knows that the memory is all at some certain offset of this address. And while doing this, already start translating the next address. So, like a in memory processing element just uses the page table. Or, Sorry? Uh, um, did you propose to use the um, address translation unit or? Yeah, the uh, decoupling of address engine and access. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think this concept is quite generous. I think you can use it for basically any type of in-memory computation and especially arrays which use a lot of um, translation. Yeah, good point. And up there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have a question like, is there any type of accelerator which would definitely not benefit from this? Um, good question. Maybe something really computation heavy. A, um, I don't know how much data you need, but maybe Bitcoin mining, where you just don't need the memory and it doesn't make sense to build something in memory. Um, and also if you have ex uh, accelerators, it should and work your whole memory, then you can't use the page table design that Mpika proposes. And to the decoupling of the address and the access engine, maybe if you have no um, computation at all, it wouldn't be <laughs> beneficial, but maybe then, yeah. So those two points. But <laughs> Thank you. Any other? We can continue to do the second one. Okay. So the second question is whether it could be possible and feasible to hide the additional complexity of Impica only inside the compiler, or whether uh, is it too difficult, or do you have any thoughts on this? Because Impica is quite complicated, but um, what are your thoughts about that the compiler could take this work away or partially away? So I have a few advantages and disadvantages of this. So the disadvantages would be that the code the compiler generates would only run off in systems where there's RAM within Pika implemented. So the code would have to perform a check at runtime in order to look up whether um, there's an Impica in the system. Wow. Of course, if you want to ship the code to other, uh, only if you want to ship the code to other machines. Um, yeah, we'll come to the dynamic libraries later. And of course, a more complex compiler would be needed. Now to the advantages, um, with the just high, um, hit all the complexity inside the compiler, we could uh, we would have a much larger target group because you could just recompile your old code, which doesn't work with Impica, and then get the accelerator code. But I can imagine this would be 
quite challenging to make such a compiler. So, um, so yeah. Um, so another option would be to use highly optimized libraries because um, I think you never really uh, implemented a binary tree yourself or and used it afterwards, or at least I didn't. So you can just link to other libraries. And maybe those libraries could be um, linked dynamically like in C so that the target machine that uh, the application works on has those library available. Um, so the right libraries, uh, so if there's MP, they have the accelerated libraries and else just the normal ones. Do you have anything to add to those points or any other questions or to the question, uh, to the first question? Oh, yeah. Thank you. Um, maybe one question out of interest. Uh, you mentioned in the paper in Pico was just simulated, right? Yeah. Uh, what is your gut feeling for the future on in Pico? Like, um, so the results are very promising, but I think uh, cooperation between the DRAM manufacturers is quite complicated because um, there's quite a large protocol to talk to the Impica because you have to provide the code that Impica runs. For example, if you have a binary tree, you have to provide the code to uh, search for the next um, node to the Impica. So I think it's quite difficult, but um, if we go back to the um, page table um, specialization, I think this could be uh, implemented sometime because it would accelerate really all kind of workloads, loads, even just um, array accesses or basically every application needs translation. I assume rather the um, decoupling of address access engine or in-memory page table will be implemented in further accelerators. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh -huh. Okay, sorry, I have a very general understanding question because I, yeah. I think there's something I didn't understand. Yeah. Which is you said um, in, uh, DRAM has in Pika, right? So also uh, the simulated one, yes. Yeah, so the main memory has in Pika. What does that mean? Is it processing in memory or what is it? What is it? Yeah, um, what is it? What does it do? Uh, it's, it's just uh, like a processor or two processors inside the main memory and then you have the lower access time and then from the cpu because the cpu is farther away from the main memory is it like up mem or is it 3d stack memory or um it's 3d stack memory um i don't quite remember the up mem but it's a cpu implemented or a, a small cpu inside the memory which is just specialized to pointer chasing Okay, thank you. And and then uh, a second question then mm -hmm. is, uh, you said they parallelize this um, accelerator, right? Yeah. But you should, uh, uh, as far as I understand the the thing you showed, the diagram you showed us is basically to just have, to just put buffers, request buffers. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, How is that parallelizing? So the main idea of parallelizing, oh, I'll force it back No. No, it should come. Uh, the main idea is to decouple the address engine from the access engine because those are quite different workloads. And because main memory needs different amount of time and also the address engine, it's more beneficial to have buffers between those accelerators. Because if the access engine has 10 values, it wants to um, send the, all of those to the address engine. But if the address engine doesn't have time, it would be very wasteful because data will still come from the main memory if it was requested earlier. But those buffers, I think they're of the size of 16 um, elements. So they're not that big. Just to um, I can't, uh, be sure that no data will be lost, I assume. And, but inside the address engine, once the address engine is done, I mean, it doesn't do multiple requests at the same time. Yeah, in serial, but at the same time, the access engine can 
send access to the main memory. So um, the accesses to the main memory are parallelized, but the address sanction isn't. Mm. It has multiple, so it's it can compute one address and then switch to another um, request, but it's serialized, that's correct. But the uh, computation isn't that much that you ha would have to parallelize it even further, or that wouldn't be such a generalizable um, subject anymore. Okay, thank you. It's much clearer enough. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. Any other questions? Um, okay, then also a big thanks to my mentors for helping me to present or make the presentation and understand the topics of Impica, which are sometimes quite complicated and also quite new to this subject. So thank you very much. And thank you for listening to this talk. Hi, Mohammed. Are you going to take a break or you're going straight to the second presentation? Yeah, normally we don't take a break, but since this is done early, um, yeah, if someone has any comment on the paper, maybe we can take that first. Does anyone have any other comment? I don't think so. Yeah, how many of the students want to take a break? We can take like five minutes break. You guys want to take five minutes break? Yes, so I guess we are taking it. Yeah, we're going to stop the live stream. All right, I think the student, the second student doesn't want to live stream, right? Yes. Uh, all right, people on YouTube, so thank you so much for watching. We are going to stop the live streaming right now. Uh, hopefully, we will uh, um, upload the recording afterwards, probably next week or so. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you.